Hello, and welcome to another episode of This Week in Hearing. I'm Brian Taylor, and today's topic is the use of medications to treat hearing disorders. It's notable that the first hearing disorder drug, Pedmark, was approved by the FDA just a few months ago. This new drug is designed to reduce the ototoxicity associated with cisplatin in pediatric patients one month or older. And of course, you know, given this breakthrough, it's a major milestone in the field of hearing disorders. And with us today to discuss this and other important topics is the CEO of Silcare, who is Celia Bellin, and also the CEO of another company called CB Set, and that's Peter Markham. Both of them are CEOs of their of their respective companies, and we're so glad that you could be with us today on this week in hearing. Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ryan. So I don't know who wants to go first. Uh, Celia, I'll, I'll we'll start with you. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, your interest in this topic. I'm Celia Bellin, and I'm the CEO of Silcare, but I'm the co-founder. So we are three founders, three women, and we founded the company in 2014. And our objective was really to support research and development of uh, therapeutics. So it can be drugs, biologics, um, gene therapy, cell therapies, or even implantable devices in the field of hearing disorders. Our background uh, for the three founders, we all come from big pharmaceutical company, and we uh, really think that this was a neglected area of pharmaceutical company at the time we left uh, the big pharmaceutical company. And there was a huge gap in between, you know, discovery at the bench and uh, the clinical research that was uh, expected and, and, and really uh, uh, that patient was waiting for. And that's why we really decided to, to bring some solutions for uh, the different players uh, in hearing disorders to help them accelerate their development in preclinical to clinical research and bring more drugs to the market. Nice. And Peter, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and your interest in this topic? Yeah, excellent. I'm Peter Markham. I'm the CEO of CDSHP. And I founded the institution in 2006 with Dr. Elazar Edelman, who's the director of the Institute of Medicine and Engineering Science at MIT. And we founded the institution to help innovators and companies uh, and individuals, researchers, translate their technologies faster into into uh, clinical grade products. And so we really service the gap between early research and first in man trials. Our institution specializes in, in anything that involves uh, minimally invasive or invasive surgical techniques and complex histopathology. So we look at the, we look at the local effect of toxicity of therapies when they're delivered to specific targets. And and about five years ago, Celia approached me and she had uh, ideas for doing GLP compliant research and hearing. And GLPs are the, are, the, are the regulatory requirements to do safety assessment prior to first in man trials. And she said that she needed a partner that could do GLP trials and hearing. And, and our institution was very interested because because hearing is, has a lot of unmet medical needs in hearing, but also it involves exactly the tools that our, our institution specializes in, and that's minimally invasive surgical techniques and, and complex histopathology. So we're, we're doing things like counting hair cells uh, you know, to understand the toxicity of, of certain compounds or doing cell implantation of cell or gene-based therapies combination products that involve, um, you know, a device and a drug. And hearing was really an unmet need and could, we could leverage all of our skills. So that's how we, we came to, to partner together. Uh-huh. And it, it, it's, uh, I know being on your website, it's truly an international company. It seems like you have uh, activities happening in about four or five different locations around the globe, which is kind of interesting. Um, and I know this is kind of a, this is a, a topic of, of uh, great interest in our in, in among um, hearing care professionals. It's kind of a new topic. Um, it seems like there's a lot going on that we don't know about in our little field of hearing care. So maybe tell us a little bit about um, how Silcare CB set is different from others that are in this uh, space. There are not a lot in the in this space. <laughs> that's the that's the first thing. Um, you know, our background is really. Um, 
I come from clinical development. So our first focus is really patient and patient's needs. So we first look at the disease and then we think about how to address this disease. And we do the same with our partners. So we actually really build uh, a services offer that allows our partners and clients to do all the preclinical work and the understanding of their drugs or technologies before they go to humans, so to patients in, in, clini in clinical phases. So that's um, the, the way we think is really first about the clients and the patients. So what will help our clients to bring something that matters for the patients? Okay. Peter, did you have anything that you wanted to add? Yeah, I think that, you know, so, so hearing has been an underserviced medical need for a long time. And, you know, for, for a variety of reasons. And one of them is that, is that if people want to sacrifice a sense, they, they would sacrifice perhaps hearing oversight. And, and, uh, but hearing is a comorbidity of a lot of other diseases. And as you're, as you said, in the beginning of the program, hearing loss can be a side effect of, of treatment of other diseases, for instance, cancer, cisplatin with cancer, resulting in hearing loss. And so you give away hearing, um, and we shouldn't be giving away hearing because hearing is incredibly important. Without hearing, we wouldn't have speech. Without speech, we wouldn't have communication. And without communication, we're really not a society. The society wouldn't have developed it as a whole in the way that it has without hearing. And evolution protected hearing. So the 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 your hearing is your the the hardest bone in your body located in the other hardest bone in your body in a place where nothing can get to it and so because it's because it's so precious and in a biological situation where it's not accessible to therapies it's hard to treat and it's very complex and so and so the interest for us is translating technologies that are being applied in other medical areas into hearing research. And as you can imagine, there's a lot of ways to do that now, where particularly you're combining devices and cells, devices and drugs, you know, cell and gene-based therapy, novel models of administration directly into the cochlea, and, uh, and being able to address hearing in a way that it wasn't present before. And so our institution, we're dedicated to, to translating technologies and the benefit that we provide to, to hearing, to the field of hearing is we have knowledge of the regulatory approval pathway of other technologies that enables its use in hearing. And so that's where we're really focused in it and, it, and, and it's fun. It's, uh, it's interesting, it's new. A lot of the a lot of the things that we're doing have no regulatory pathway and no predicate to compare to, and so from a scientific perspective, it's interesting. From a medical perspective, it's important, and uh, and and it's just a you know it's just a great uh, emerging market to be part of. Yeah, that's good to know. I one of the things that struck me that you mentioned a, a moment ago was that you accelerate the development of auditory therapies. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about what you mean by accelerating the development and maybe give us an example? Yeah, so the idea is, is you know, so in, in, the, in the different technologies that we address today, there is a big part that is about gene therapy. And here you're, we, are call, we are talking about inherited hearing loss most of the time, at, at least at the first intent. And the second thing is really what Peter started to mention, which is these hearing disorders that are linked to other diseases. And it can be cancer because there is the autotoxicity of the chemotherapeutics that are used for treating cancer. But there is also huge uh, prevalence of hearing loss within diabetes patient, for instance, within chronic kidney disease patient, within neurodegenerative uh, disease patient. So uh, the, the hearing loss is the third risk factor for the evolution of from my cognitive impairment to dementia. So that's something that we try to address as well. And so to, uh, to accelerate that kind of things, what we do is that we develop models and techniques that enables our partners or clients to, to test the efficacy of those uh, new technology or drugs 
on this very specific pathology. So what will make, uh, what will help drugs to reach the market is to select the, the first is to diagnose well, I would say the disease. So to understand where is the cause of hearing loss and then to finally find the right mechanism of action, target and drug to be able to address that specifically. And so we are talking about, you know, neuropathy, synaptopathy, so hidden hearing loss. So this difficulty of hearing in noise, for instance, we have the hearing loss with the noise in your ear, and there are several um, consequences of, of, of hearing loss and, and causes of hearing loss that we try to address the best. And that for that, you need to have a very good understanding of, of the of the disease and the underlying mechanisms be on the disease as well. Mm -hmm. Peter, did you have anything you wanted to add? Yeah, I think the um, uh, certainly you know uh, you know gene therapy is 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 up and coming, and for hearing, it's a target and it's a target that's isolated from the rest of the body in some way, and so from a side effect pro profile. Potentially, uh, gene therapy can be used, you know, because you have an isolated organ to treat. But in addition to that, you know, we're developing devices. And so, so bioresorbable materials, polymers can be used to help repair injury to the tympanic membrane. The, uh, the current technologies that are used for let's say cochlear implants may be able to be used for drug delivery for for restorative uh, hearing loss versus just putting a wire in and 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 having an artificial way to connect the signals mm -hmm. um, there's you know there's uh, there's chronic ear infections in children that that uh, that uh, potentially can be re you know treated with with long-term local drug deliver, de delivery versus systemic, where the systemic drugs don't get to the ear and you have to dose so high that you end up with systemic toxicity, trying to treat a local problem. So there's a lot of opportunities to combine technologies to treat hearing loss. And it's just a really exciting field. Yeah, no, I wanna echo that. I think for anybody out there that's um, an audiologist or a hearing aid dispenser who uh, ENT, um, you know, the fact that we have hopefully in the near future, many more choices with regard to, to treatment. I think that's really exciting. Yeah. Uh, you know, in our, in, in, in my little field, we talk an awful lot about, uh, over the counter hearing aids as a, as a, as a disruptive force. Well, uh, this is much more potentially disruptive when you can think about the, you know, delivering medications directly to the, to the, um, to the ear. Uh, so. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and the future is probably the combination, actually, because mm -hmm. the hearing aids are something that is absolutely needed on the market, you know, but mm -hmm. it will not solve the disease cause. And so there is really a synergy in between the different devices that are proposed and that will be proposed and, and optimized also in the future with uh, other technologies and drugs that will actually treat different things of the ear. Uh, problems that we can yeah, encounter. That, that's a great point that these things would be used in combination. Absolutely. It's an add-on that, 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 yeah, most of the therapeutics that are going to be actually developed will be developed at the end on add-on to a hearing aids potentially. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. So we want to, we want to eliminate the tough choices. So the tough choices is, do I treat, do I treat my cancer and lose my hearing? Do I, do I um, uh, choose a cochlear implant? for my child knowing that that's an irreversible uh, situation where if it's removed you'll no longer have hearing and not be able to restore hearing in that ear should i do it in one ear or two ears there's a lot of decisions that we're making that we're we're we're, we're potentially sacrificing hearing and we don't have to make those decisions in the future if we employ the right technologies to advance the therapies that, yeah. that yeah, really we're, we're able to develop now it's really exciting times. Um, let's talk a little bit about your strategic alliance between Silcare and CBSET. Uh, I know that uh, you recently celebrated your fifth year anniversary, so congratulations for that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and uh, but tell us a little bit more about why you formed this strategic alliance between the two companies. Sure. So so when Celia approached us in in two thousand and six, uh, she had a she had an extraordinary vision. 
and and her devotion to the to the field to of hearing loss and and tinnitus and the other hearing related diseases was extraordinary and she came with a she came with a group of scientists who were experts in their field and and had uh, been involved in the in the development of therapies for hearing loss and and that's the specialization that we needed to be able to put together a, a series of of tools to to service the translational research necessary in hearing and so we saw that as an extraordinary opportunity because because in order to hire the people that have the expertise you know from the onset and build it from nothing it would have taken much longer from celia's perspective she came to an institution that had the GLP compliant uh, research. We had the platform, we had the expertise, we had the regulatory uh, knowledge in, in, in developing other technologies, like technologies for other, for other therapeutic areas. And, and so plugging the Silcare's scientific expertise and CBT sets regulatory expertise and building a a GLP compliant platform that wasn't available in the United States at the time uh, was an opportunity for both organizations, and we've been high, highly successful. And and some of the um, some of the uh, therapies that we've brought through uh, GLP safety assessment are now in clinical trial. So we're happy to have had uh, success through COVID. Yeah, and, that's, that's in here, and, and it's and it's a growing market, and it's uh, and it's a market that has longevity. And there's a lot of a lot of space to innovate um, in this field, which is very interesting to both parties. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Celia, if you want to go go in more. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think I, I can make some some uh, some addings, especially on the um, you know it's it's really a mindset. We wanted to go fast, and the best way to go fast is to to partner with the best partner. <laughs> and so, to do that combination of we bring the you know the expertise and the vision, as Peter says, I uh, said on 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 hearing, and and we we have a real good and established and and very successful partner with us to to move forward in this in this field of hearing. So we don't reinvent the wheel; we just combine forces to go faster and and support better our partners and clients so that's really what we wanted then it was a you know a kind of cultural uh, marriage as well because you you know but this is something we are used to I think really uh, create the feeling of being a team very quickly uh, in between cell care uh, and and CB set was something also I think extraordinary in the journey uh, that people are actually still living uh, together mm. Mm. I, I, as we as we uh, wrap things up, uh, one and it's not often that we have a CEO on our on our on our uh, on our broadcast, <laughs> let alone two CEOs. So uh, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to be with us. But I wanted to kind of pick your brain um, about the future of uh, hearing healthcare uh, and kind of uh, get your perspective on how you think how you think um, the future is going to un unfold with some of these new emerging technologies from companies that are coming from yours. So yeah. what do you think? What do you, what, what's your crystal ball say about hearing but healthcare? Would, yeah. <laughs> So you, we are today. We are really, in addition to the gene therapy um, or genetic therapy, I should say, or cell therapies that are really breakthrough technology that can uh, see, a, a, I mean, a, a solutions or can bring solutions to to hearing disorders. We are also very much focused on this interlink in between. Uh, hearing loss or hearing disorders, I should say, and auditory signature of patients. And that's something I think uh, um, audiologists will be very interested in and uh, other diseases. And I really think, and this is what we see also in the literature today, that we're going to use the auditory signature of patients or digital auditory signature as a prognostic factor of the evolution of other diseases. And that is also extremely important. It's a, it's a sense that gives you in advance an alert on what's going wrong within your body. Or, or, and, and this is something that I think is going to be very useful in the future. So this monitoring of the auditory function of anybody uh, along the life is going to be, you know, a game changer in the prediction 
of the evolution to chronic disease. Yeah, that before I, I, I want to, uh, that's really uh, intriguing. You, you called it a digital auditory signature? Yes. Uh, tell <laughs> us more about what you mean by that. Uh, we are trying to do that kind of things, you know, because in, in preclinical, we are using a battery of tests to really diagnose very precisely the disease that we cause to, to our different models. So it's using ABR, we're using DPOAE, we're using CEP, EP, we're using, you know, echocochleography, lots of things to diagnose the animals. And this is something that should be translated. And this is something we're working on right now. Try to really have a battery of tests in human that can also give you like you have with an ECG, you know, the digital auditory signature of the patient. And it might not be, you know, a matter of hearing threshold. It might be something different. You see, you know, a, I don't know, a, a, an interpeak that is longer, a latency of the wave one, uh, that kind of things. And mm -hmm. all those things will give you, you know, an auditory signature, digital auditory signature of the patient. And that can predict if it's it wrong, <laughs> something that is going to happen in your brain, uh, in inflammation in your body, or you know that kind of things. That's really interesting, and I just—I mean, it's much more. It's way beyond the traditional peer tone audiogram, which I think many of our uh, viewers know is a very primitive tool for identifying uh, hearing disorders. So, uh, thank you for sharing that, Celia. Peter, what's your take on the future? Well, I think it, not only the, the therapies will change, but also um, the ability to image and to assess hearing in different ways. And so Celia is measuring, you, you know, talking about signal measurement, potentially having a, having a baseline auditory functional test that you can, that you can assess over time to assure that you're, in, you know, you're remaining in good, good health. And specifically when you get to, to you know, to be older, um, but in addition to that, the technologies are evolving from an imaging perspective, from a measurement perspective, from a sensitivity perspective. And, and what used to be large is now becoming very small. And as, as it gets very small and very sensitive, it will become particularly useful in, 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 this, in the small structures of the ears. And so, so we're also developing uh, the imaging technologies to be able to allow the clinicians to assess the disease earlier and in a more in a more accurate manner, and perhaps um, you know uh, that will help the field overall field as well. Well, I think there's uh, many uh, many aspects of uh, of diagnosis, identification, treatment of uh, hearing disorders that. Uh, you know, we can look forward to as hearing care professionals. So thank you so much uh, for spending some time with us, uh, Celia Belin and <laughs> Peter Markham, uh, CEOs respectively of Care and CBSET. Uh, thank you for being on the broadcast. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much for inviting us. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>